I want to put my cards on the table from the start. I'm a Catholic, a lapsed Catholic, but like many I feel uncomfortable around Christianity. So why did I try to make a film about this Christian community? A fanatically religious group who pursue a regimented spiritual life. Because as much as I'm repelled by them, I'm fascinated. And as much as I find their lifestyle and practices questionable, I want to know if they have something that I have lost. The Jesus Army has over a hundred houses across the country. They call this one Battle Centre. I do, I do commit myself to Jesus, but I've, I've been a football lad since I was about eight years old. That's going to be hard, that's gonna be hard to get, get rid of, you know yeah. what I mean? It's been in my heart since I've been eight years old. So if you had to choose between football and Jesus? Well, that, 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 don't do that. That's don't not, do that. Don't go there. That, 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 that's, that's not even. That's, that's not even on the list. That's not even an option. That's, the, that's, that's not, not even an option. Jesus and me all. Jesus and football. As long as I can have them two in life, then I'll be happy. So. But if you have to pick one, but that, that's that's not even in in the dictionary, the vocabulary. No, don't even go there. Gavin and Mick have recently joined the Jesus Army and come to Battle Centre from their hostel in South London. They will have to prove their commitment to Christianity before they can join the 35 men, women and children here as residents. We try not to put people under the false impression that, like, it's a charity. Do you have you had people coming with that? Oh, a lot. A lot? Especially homeless people. Yeah. I mean, sometimes we just bring homeless people back for the weekend and just say you can stay for the weekend. And. If they like it, if they catch on to what we're about, you can usually tell. Yeah. Most of the houses are expected to go out onto the streets every week in the hope that the power of their message will find new members. Father, I just pray that the, the people in that pub over there, Lord, as they, as they look out from where they are, Lord God, that you will work powerfully to, to, to show them that there is, is sin within them, Lord God, and, and that there is a friend and a saviour, Jesus. Cause them to come to this bus, Lord Jesus. Cause them to find out what's going on inside them right now, Lord. Cause them to find out why they're so uncomfortable. And as they look at us, that they actually get convicted, Father. And they feel uncomfortable with their friends, Lord God. As the evening goes on, Lord God, they're more uncomfortable. These people have given their lives to this church. They've handed over all possessions and income, relinquished sex unless in the church approved marriage, and consented to a strict set of rules that seeks to separate them from anything seen as worldly. <laughs> Over 3,000 members in the whole Jesus army have embraced these values. I wake up in the morning and get a blackout, didn't it? Yeah. You see me in the morning, I can't even walk to it. No, but you just drink and drinks sure and drinks all day long, isn't it? Okay. Get me off the booze. Do you, do you believe that God's got power to do something? No. Oh, yeah. For sure. sure. For sure. No, yeah, Without a doubt. Without a doubt. <laughs> If he has, it wouldn't, life wouldn't be like this, would it? God, just give yeah. me a wide awakening. Anyway, we're going to pray for you. Then. Yeah, go on then. Oh, Holy Spirit, I just thank you that you are love. Thank you that you're not complicated, but you're just love. And I just pray that right now you'll bring that, that sense of your love to Sky. You want to touch him, you want to feel yourself supernaturally by the power of your blood. Just come now. Come now and touch his heart, Lord. Oh, let him find a, a hope, Lord, where he didn't have a hope before. I just thank you that you're the God of hope. Getting a bus, Sky. Oh, yes. <laughs> Bring him that hope, Lord. Bring him the fire it. of your spirit. I can tell you, Bush, maybe because you're smiling. Surely 
that was nice. <laughs> Thank you. The church appointed leader of Battle Center was an acid dropping hippie who converted to Christianity in his 20s. I think I've had a fairly secure, fairly sheltered upbringing, you know, a fairly normal kind of family. And uh, I listen to people, I just wonder how they've got through. I just do. It is. It's a mess. It's the human condition that is, is, is messed up at, in, in, at its root. Um, and that's what God in Christ addresses. And that's what we're trying to work out in our little way. You know, and it is a small way. Tiny, tiny. Our little house, you know, what are we doing? <laughs> I walk into the centre of London or I drive, I drive through here on a Sunday and I look at the people. And I think, I see people and I think, I don't know you. I wonder what, I wonder what your life's like. I wonder what you're going back home to. Um, oh, God. I think I'm going to stop crying. <sighs> this is crazy. <laughs> There's just so much hurt. So many messed up people, so many hurting people. The most recent addition to the house is Alec. He was picked up two days ago while hitchhiking on the motorway. He'd been working abroad and has returned to start a new life. I wonder if he really understands what he's gotten into. Last, the last place in earth I thought I'd ever end up. I mean, it, wasn't, it wasn't until after the, the meal night I came out to have a cigarette and I looked at the side of the van, you know, the minibuses and that, and I was a white ass sitting here, you know. And I went, Jesus army. What if I got myself into here, you know? It was like, I mean, like the Mormons used to come and knock on my flat door and things like that in Aberdeen, you know? And I just kick the door closed, like, get knotted, you know? I mean, yeah, it's just, religious things have never ever bothered me, you know? It's each to their own, you know? You go and do your thing, I'll go, and, I'll go down the pub instead, you know? Yeah. But, OK, I mean, do you understand why? That's the important thing. So it's not a matter of you can't do this and you can't do that, and you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. Do you understand? There's no point. It's seeing things behind. Each person at Battle Centre is assigned a shepherd, chosen from among the leaders and trainee leaders of the house. Your shepherd is there for help and advice, but must also report on your spiritual progress. Billy has been at Battle Centre for eight years and is the father figure of the house. He's been appointed as Alex Shepherd. First night when he came, I couldn't sleep. I was praying for him all night. And then when he woke up, and it was the second day, when he woke up in the morning, that's when he said, I've been born. He said, I don't know what all this means, giving your life to Jesus and all that. And I said, well, what we normally do is like say this sinner's prayer and say we'll kneel down now and do it. We did and we knelt down. We just went through the sinner's prayer, which is like really simple. It just says, Lord, I'm a sinner. I want you to forgive me. I want you to come into my life. I've made a mess of my life. I want you to lead me and be Lord in my life. And he repeated it. And I just left him there. And he just, he just wept. And that was it. The Jesus Army has suffered at the hands of the media. At these orchestrated mass gatherings of the church, it's easy to see why. 
Surrounded by this extreme behavior, I found it hard to reconcile my conflicting feelings. I worried that many people here must feel the pressure to act out some bogus spiritual experience. But I was also aware of my deep discomfort at being surrounded by so much raw and honest emotion. Don't know. Eh? Don't know. Something's happening to you. Don't know what it is. It's, it's too much. It's too much. Too much for anybody to take in. It's, just, it's hypnotic. It is. It's hypnotic. You've got to keep on pulling yourself away or you just get sucked in. You didn't have like a really, really strong mind or a mind of your own. You could just go. Why, do you, why would you not do that? I don't know. Something in there starts me. In here feels like, oh, join it, but in here's like, keep your distance. You know? Right, okay, we, we've, got a, we've got an army of, here we go. Are you there? You're on your toes ready? We've got an army of celibates. <laughs> Where, where's, where's, where's the latest? Is she here? Where is she? I love sex, you know? It was brilliant. I mean, sex has controlled half my relationships, you know? It's like being a important factor in it, you know? And here's them up on the stage in the middle of Birmingham, about 500 people, and it says, well, it's celibate. Oh, well, whoopee do, you know? And, uh, I how could you get excited about it? I mean, I can't understand it. I can't comprehend that one. You know, it's... I'm celibate. Let's cheer, let's roar, let's blow whistles, let's have a party! You know? I mean, would you want anyone to know? Most people will marry, but some people will be given the gift not to and be able to express their lives in this particular way. You're not the ugliest person in the world. You're not the strangest person in the world. You didn't have to be here tonight. But many of you have put away your own pleasure because of living in God's rest. Because of There is huge body. sensitivity to people's past in the house. You could have gotten out, you? Some of the people here, both men and women, have been the victims of abuse. And all new residents are warned not to impose on the opposite sex. Single men live in a separate part of the house from the women, and many activities are segregated. But despite this, there's a feeling of understanding and inclusiveness that only seems to be limited by the church's need to follow strict spiritual guidelines. I want to show all homosexuals that Jesus loves them. Because they seem to think that the church condemns them. And this church especially does not condemn homosexual. You know, I mean, we, we try. But we make a stance about, you know, we will make a stance about accepting everyone where they are. It's a little bit like, it's a, it's a counterfeit of our brotherhood, isn't it? It's, it's a bit... What do you mean? Oh, don't you think a homosexual knows that he's doing something wrong? No. Against nature? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, no. I think he, I think he does. Because they're too passionate. <laughs> I mean, the homosexuality is something people are born with. No, it's not. No, no that's not true. No, not at all. <laughs> that's not true. Absolutely. <laughs> My kids. Would you say they're born like that? So one of your children could be homosexual. Yeah, could be, but would you say they're born like that? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Oh. It's the teaching and the the influence in the surrounding. Right. Yeah. Somebody turning out a homosexual is due to conditioning. It's due to experience. It's due to all sorts of different factors. And sometimes but you actually use... make someone a homosexual. Someone becomes a homosexual. I'm not born in. You're not born in a cradle a homosexual. <laughs> and you don't have to remain one either. You see, I think you're just trying to have your cake and eat it. You're saying... I've probably had my cake and eat it, Leo. That's why I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but were you a homosexual? Yeah. And I was made a homosexual. Really? Yeah. I was abused. 
And after that, I thought, this must be the way I am. But it wasn't. And it isn't. Nobody needs to remain a homosexual either. Because I, I, I realised that at one point in my life that I was just an, an ordinary man and I wanted to get married, I wanted to have children. And I did. It didn't work out, but there you go. Well, I've got a bike with me, but it's down at the garages down there. Because I, I didn't know whether I was allowed to bring it here. Keith has run away from his foster family. He's been on the streets for three days and says he's already been sexually assaulted. He's just been picked up by the church. Why were you coming to London? Um, because I, cause my bad family was here. That's why I came down here. Because I was being first again and they lived over in Paddington. Then a few days ago, sorry, about a day ago now, I found out. Because I found out where, where they lived. So I went there and I knocked on the door. But when I found out they they were, they'd gone to Scotland, I was crying like hell. I was like, no, pools coming off my eyes and stuff, which was really depressing. But when I, was the last time you've seen them? Um, eleven years ago. In Paddington. Yeah. And when was the last time you spoke to them or had contact with them? About ten years ago, because I kept in touch with them for a year. Then, then I went into foster care. Someone met him on Wednesday night, and he's apparently run away from his foster parents. So he's obviously, he's only 17. So, well, he, he can stay here for the weekend or whatever, but obviously we'll have to uh, work things through properly you know, with his parents and all the rest of it. You know. It's a little bit difficult when you've got someone who's under 18 because they can't get benefits or that kind of thing to support themselves and whatever work. And you've got to work things out properly with the family as well, you know. So, I don't know how that's going to take its course, but someone will have to get their hands dirty and sort of... Who's going to do that? I don't know. Um, Chris seems to have taken hold of it. So, might be a good opportunity for Chris to sort of have a little go at sorting it through. Chip, 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 we hate you bastards in claret and blue. Gavin and Mick are spending less time at Battle Centre. They're embarrassed to tell their friends and family that they've become, in their words, Bible bashers. When we are the best, we are the most of faculty. No self one, you're gonna get your fucking no kitchen. Tin. That's enough one, but I don't really get, when, when they start singing them songs, I don't like really get involved. It's just that, I just, like, I just go there. To watch a good game of football. Well, you do sing the songs. I do sing the songs now and again, yeah. And, and then you sing yeah, these songs and then you go to church. Yeah. Do you have a problem with that? Do you think there is a problem with that? I don't think there is a problem with it. No. Because I ask before, I, I don't know why, before, so, uh, before I go to football, I always, I always look, look up to God and like, pray to him and say to him, like, forgive me for my actions this afternoon. And, like, I think he, he will forgive you. He, he, he will forgive you. It seems to me that uh, there's a lot of problems with, with your lifestyle and the bath centre. Like, wh why are you there? I don't know. I just, just want to, I don't know, I just want to change, really. Just Most change getting out of South London. And uh, get, getting out of South part. London. Doing it's like, as soon as we get up there, we can uh, just relax. Like, and relax. And be ourselves and they take you for what you are. For who you are and what you are, now you can sit there and you can relax. And you, if you've got problems, you can talk. To, you can talk to the brothers, or the sisters, and sisters, and get advice off them. So, I don't know. It's just like a big buzz, really. It's better than smoking now. You're smoking a real thing when you go to, go to the church. When you say smoking, you mean smoking and puff and all that. Yeah. It's like it's, the buzz is much, much higher than. Makes that. you feel stoned. 
It makes you feel really happy when you go there as well. You can just sit there, relax, like, chill out for a couple of hours, listen to people talk about God and sing a few songs and get someone to pray for you, which is, which is really nice. It's like, <clears throat> instead of getting drunk on actual spirits... But drunk on the Holy Spirit. And you're getting drunk on the Holy Spirit. Two weeks ago, Gavin and Mix Shepherd told them they would have to choose between football and the community, and they haven't been seen much recently. But Alex seems to have tapped into something. He still feels uneasy here, but can't stop going on about the power of the place. It seems as if something has shifted in him. We mustn't incubate those thoughts. We mustn't nurture them. Keith is trying to fit in, but he's not too convincing. I think the church are waiting to see his true character. It's obvious that he craves the warmth of this community, but I worry that this is not the right place for someone so vulnerable. He's a nice kid. Tells a few whoppers, but obviously it's just to cover up his sad life. I think once he learns to open up and learns to trust us with the truth, he learn to love the truth. Do you know what I mean? It's very important that he, he does that quite quickly and lets go of that, you know, manufacturing a life. Because otherwise this is just another part of the acting. He, need, he needs to have reality. and He's a, he's a good kid, though. Something very, yeah, he's, he's searching, he's searching for love, real love. He's probably not seen a lot of that, yeah. Alec is finding a new openness at Battle Centre. He's been trying to reevaluate his past. Today's the 10th birthday of his estranged daughter. He last saw her when she was a baby. It's too hard to think about. Hundreds of people out there hurting the same way. Hundreds, hundreds and hundreds. The society of single mothers, eh? Well, I reckon a good 90% of the guys are feeling exactly the same. You know, the day that, certainly the ones that were there, certainly the ones that got their hands squeezed, you know, when they were going through the pain and delivery. Yeah, big boys don't cry. We do. The church might have a new problem with Keith. He turned up this morning with a bike which he says is his. He claims it was stolen from Battle Centre last week and that he has now found it five miles away. So the bike that was left at the end of the road here turns up. All right, um, I found it in central trainee, London. Um, and he walks across it. Sales to marketing. That's guidance, isn't it? That's okay. <laughs> divine appointment, if ever there was. Oh dear, we've got a stolen bike here. We better do something about it. Hey. Yeah, you got a minute? I just have a a wee chat with you. Yeah. Where where's your bike now? It's in the old garden. Is it? Yeah. You, you left it here at the end of the road. Yeah, I left it where the carriage was. Well, Vauxhall Bridges. How far away from here? About five. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, I walked. What were you doing at Vauxhall Bridge? Were you just going for I was walk? just going for a walk kind of thing. So I'm, so I'm still getting to know London. Yeah. And by sheer coincidence, I was like thinking, I wish I had a bike. A few minutes, I was like, ching, there's my bike. Don't you think that's the most fantastic coincidence ever? But that is my bike. So you didn't come to London with a bike? No. 
you told me five minutes ago that you came to London yes, I know. on a bike. I'm sorry. And you brought it on the train. So that, so, okay, right. Well, I had no... So that, that one was a lie, yeah. right? But the bike I've got now has got two lights on it. Mine didn't have two lights on it. It doesn't add up, does it? No, but that bike is very similar to one I had. So basically... Very. Basically, you've either nicked two bikes, or you've only nicked one bike. I've only or... nicked one. So you've nicked one. Which one was that? Um, probably the one that, that's somewhere else. So you should I take a bike back tomorrow? No, no, which is a bit no, no, it's somebody's bike. They're looking for it. You've got to take it back this afternoon. OK, then. But the line, well, what's, what's, the, what's the whole thing about lying? Why? I'm actually trying hard not to lie. And you know it's going to get you in trouble. Yeah, no. Battle Centre has opened its doors to muggers, drug dealers and murderers. Once you enter the house you're expected to start a new life. Each person's spiritual progress is monitored regularly by the leaders of the house. Yeah, you can't compare you can't compare a Keith with an Alec. Talk about Alec, eh? Why is he here? <laughs> well, I mean, it looks like a d divine appointment, doesn't it? Well, his, his life is in a bit of crisis at the moment. His, uh, his marriage broke up and he lost his kid t ten years ago. And ever since then he's been on a sort of wild one. You know, I mean, he's really caught up. He's not allowed to see the kid. Right. I don't know all the circumstances, but it's, it's that sort of a thing. He's just sort of hit the bottle there. He's definitely finding something going on very powerfully. Yeah, within himself. I mean, it's all a bit incredible, really. It's, it's not. Because I'm not feeding it, I'm just listening to him all the time. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I'm not. Sometimes I'll give him a scripture and show him. And, uh, you know, oh, it says it in there, I was thinking that. You know? yeah. So. Right, anyway, so he, he is saying at the moment he wants to stick around. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I've got concerns for him as well, in as much as he, he, what is happening to him is bigger than he has obviously experienced before. His feet haven't touched the ground yet, have they? No, um, he, he, he does need earthing. <laughs> yeah, and he does. And, and I'm, I'm trying not... to get him loads of practical things to do around. Good. I mean, really, what he's saying is very good, and I'm, I'm very impressed with what is going on with him. And it's, as far as I can see, it is a work of God. But um, if he doesn't earth himself, he looks like he becomes psychotic or something, to be honest. Yeah. I'm a little concerned. Yeah. Alec is off the booze. He's obeying the teetotal rule of the house and is sleeping well for the first time in years. But he's finding it hard to keep up with himself. You're getting all this stuff inside you and this feeling. But you can't argue about it. You can't. You can't fight it. It, it just keeps on coming, right? And you can't do a thing about it. You're stuck. You're like, okay? And you analyse it and go, well, "That's a heap of shit. That is crap." Then you go, oh, "But it's not." You know, one bit of you says it is, another bit it says it is, and you're just stuck it. And you're like, it's frustrating. You just, man, the old, the old. The old me would have went and hurt somebody, you know? Oh, yeah. The old me would have went and hurt someone or something, and uh, went out and got drunk and, like, oh, if the anger would have come out, uh, if I had my licence still, you know, I would jump into the car and drive it really fast, you know? And go and find a cunt to the road and just take the aggression out, you know? These people's confidence in the power and truth of their beliefs is unshakable and their conviction that they can connect with almost anyone no longer seems naive to me. OK, now, yeah, 0793. 0793, two. I think it would be nice if I film a dim brain for you. Okay. You've got to invest in this. Lead. No, I'm not... I'm Give it a go. I'm a bit afraid, actually. Afraid? What are you afraid of? I don't know. Me? Yeah. <laughs> me? You can't be afraid of me. <laughs> what is it? It's just the power of the Holy Spirit. When they asked me if I'd receive a blessing, I accepted, principally to maintain the feeling of goodwill. But I only entered into this with a completely closed mind. Lord, 
Lord, we just ask you simply now in Jesus' name to come and impart your life and your power and your goodness and your love to Leo now, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Holy Spirit, we just apply this oil. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you now to move upon Leo's heart, upon his mind, Lord God. As much as I was trying not to feel anything, I was shocked to have a very strong sense of some kind of energy passing through me. Oh yeah, just feeling him receive now in Jesus' name. Receive that power, Leah. Receive that gift of love. I hoped it wasn't visible to them or the camera, but for a moment I experienced extreme panic. I dismissed it instantly and put it to a place buried far in the back of my mind. I feel you. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> However, two days later, I felt an urge to dance around the subject with Steve. I've never said to myself or to others, let's get Leo. You know, he's here. <laughs> you know, let, let God get him and he's going to join our church. I would never presume to say such things. I don't, you know, that's, I can't even think down those paths. All I know is that you being who you are, God is touching you. And I'm seeing that happen even in the last few weeks. In the last few weeks? Well, I, I think it is growing. Mm. Well, I don't know. That's right or wrong, but right. but you know, um, doesn't have to go the whole way, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it it does. I mean, <laughs> the thing is, that this is it would be immensely tragic if you never came to a real faith in Christ. Wouldn't. It would. It would not. It would. It would not. I, the thing is, my Christian faith tells me that we all need to be saved. I can't, I can't play around with it. I can't compromise that. Yeah, but that's, we, yeah, you know, that's from your perspective. Exactly, and I'm the one who's talking. <laughs> and that, well, that, you're asking me, and that's how I feel. And you, you see me getting passionate about things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see these things as being life or death issues. I yeah. really do. You know, yeah, I do. And you are obviously someone who's in close contact with us, and I feel this for you. Yeah. I think, well, I really want Leo to find Jesus to be his saviour. Yeah. I'm not saying, and I'm not saying, I really want Leo to join us as a church. Right, sure, sure. I don't, I don't want to find Jesus to be my saviour. You don't? No. Why? Door of my heart, open wide, I keep for thee. Wilt thou come? Over a thousand people have passed through here. Many of them claim to have found God, but few have committed to this lifestyle. Without seeing thee, my Lord, night and day, night and day, I look for thee, night and day. I wish I could understand what drives these people to this level of sacrifice. Tim met the Jesus Army in a chill-out tent in Glastonbury and has been here for nine years. He started finding God in his early twenties. I was, I was, I was making love to this to to this girl I was with at the time, and uh, I stopped what I was doing. And uh, and I, I said to her, I said, do you realise what we're doing is like sort of the beginning of creation, you know, we're creating something here, you know. This is an incredibly powerful thing, you know, the way God intended it to be, you know. Think about God creating the world, you know, just, just the explosion of, of new life, you know. And it just convicted me, you know, and I, and, I, and, I, and I told her at the time, you know, and, and I stopped what I was doing. And, and, I, and I actually was crying about it. And, and from that point on, that was, that was, that was the, the last time I ever uh, got involved in that sort of thing, you know. The basement at Battle Centre is set aside for prayer and contemplation. 
This morning Alec came down here alone. He says that he felt a power in this room that overwhelmed him. He now feels sure that this house is the place where he was meant to start his new life. And I couldn't move. I couldn't move. I was like, oh, no, what's going on? I've got to get out. And I couldn't get out. It was, oh, it was nice, but it was horrible. It was a horrible experience. If you want to get back to your enemies, put them downstairs. Simple. Why do you think it's horrible, Billy? Why is he experiencing that? Because he's fighting it, I think. A little bit. Yeah. When he starts to give in, that's when he'll enjoy. But it's, it always takes a little bit. Do you notice he said when, not if? Yeah. Not if. Mm. It's probably the right world, is it? It's you know? gone too deep already. Right. It's changed. Completely changed. I can see that Alec has been affected by the unconditional love and acceptance of these people. But there's something else here. You can feel it when you're amongst them. They claim that it's spiritual, created by God and not them. And that Alec is now letting it work within him. What? Did you eat your fat neck and you can't help it you can't burn it off? So far no signs of spiritual growth have been detected in Keith. But he has formed a worrying attachment to Battle Centre. It'd be nice if I could just go home, but I don't feel ready. So I really want to go home to pick up all my stuff, but I don't feel like it just yet. I feel inside I need to go home, see everyone, speak to everyone and in my family, but I can't. Why? Because this is my new home kind of thing. I've got Chris. He's a shepherd. He's my shepherd. He's my friend. He, I dream as my true brother. Uh, my name's uh, Bill McGough. I'm with uh, Jesus Fellowship. It's a church in London. Yeah. And, um... Billy has been trying to get hold of Keith's foster parents and has finally managed to contact his twin brother. Keith, he's been staying with us for a few days. Yeah, just to let you know that he's all right. Both Steve and Billy are worried that they're going to get stuck with Keith whatever they decide. They've told him that the best place for him is probably his foster home. I've got him here, actually, if you want to speak to him. Right. All right, James. I am on coming tomorrow to pick up a few things, right? Because um, so it treats me as family kind of thing here. Yeah, I'm right. Keith Shepherd, however, thinks he may have a future at Battle Centre. What do you do if, if Keith doesn't make it? <laughs> you never know, do you? Would that hurt? Huh? Would you be hurt? Of course. Of course, because you love someone if someone doesn't... Uh... Basically saying if he does, if he if he goes or if he goes another way, yeah, then yeah. it'll hurt, of course. I mean, I think I've had a hard on every morning for all my life, right? All of my life, right? And I haven't had a hard on in the morning this week, right? I mean, it's up before me, you know. For the past few days, Alec has been ecstatic and has talked about nothing but his new feelings of faith. You're someone totally different. You're, you're not yourself. You're not. You, know, you don't recognise yourself. As in, like, the, the feeling sense. Not like that, oh, look in the mirror. I mean, you're still the same person, you know, but it's. It just doesn't feel like you're yourself anymore. Which is. A really weird thing. You've got a different kind of love feeling inside you. You know, it's not that. Oh, it's great, I'm holding her hand walking down the street feeling. It's great, I'm holding someone. Can't see it. <laughs> Unlucky. You know? Unlucky. It's 
Look what I'm walking down the road with. You know, I'm walking down the road with everything. You've got nothing. But you see what's happening here? You're starting to proselytise, you know what I mean? You're starting to preach. Now, would you start... You are! You're telling nah, me. No, 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 never, 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 no. no, no, no. It's like, I've got everything, you know? No. Look at that, wings. Look, look at it. Ha-ha! I've got it! Tough! It's ace! It's... Much to everyone's relief, after six weeks at Battle Centre, Keith has decided to patch things up with his foster parents. I'll see you around. Right, Good luck for the future if I don't see. Okay. Tell the rest, I'll be phoning them up if I have to stay. All right, and tell Chris, thank you for everything that he's done to me. I love him a lot. Bye. See you, Keith. I gotta go. Within 12 hours, Keith had returned to Battle Centre. So I did try and talk him into me living. My, my twin and my dad tried talking her into it as well. So they trying to back me up, but it didn't work. My mum was all barricaded herself into me not coming back. So I'm in quite a heat. But I'm phoning her up tonight at 3.30 to drop my stuff off on Saturday. But, but I said to her, I, I, might, I might as well just go back to London for my birth. And she said, well, that's a very good idea. Bye. Slam. And I thought I just walked off crying. Because of Keith's vulnerability, the leaders don't want to put him back on the streets. Steve is hoping he can mediate between Keith and his foster parents and get him back home. Keith had said he'd been home yesterday, and I was just wondering whether he had or not. He hasn't. Well, <laughs> that's clearly true, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I mean, it is one story after another. Uh, yeah, OK, then. Yeah, bye-bye. No, of course he's not been there. He's a very plausible liar. He r rang rings around his psychiatrist. He's very skilled at saying what he thinks the person wants to hear. Done it with social workers, done it with psychiatrists, done it with teachers. I'm doing it with us. Anyway, she's... Um, very grateful for our input and helping him, but very sorry that he cannot go home. Clear. Clear. Life is a roller coaster, don't mind if I it. The leaders must now decide if Keith can stay any longer. Keith's shepherd Chris thinks he has seen some spiritual progress and wants him to join the community. But it is Chris who will have to tell Keith if he has to leave. You really need to brace yourself to talk to him because he is looking up to you big time. You're gonna hurt him. No. But that's the reality of fathering somebody like him. Uh, it could develop your relationship, but it could leave him feeling rejected, probably like the history of his life. Yeah. If he's felt rejected all along for the rest of his life. In the last few weeks, Alec has relived all the events from his past that have hurt him and is now in a very raw state. He feels that this is part of his Christian rebirth. But what really worries me is his claim that God is now talking directly to him. I thought about suicide and everything yesterday. Right? And I haven't thought about that since I did it the last time. Right. I don't know. Yes, you thought about it. I during the day. You know? I was thinking about it. Right? What do you I mean was about suicide? Do you mean about suicide? Right? Oh. I was getting us messages saying to me, right? Total sacrifice, you know? 
sacrifice your na name of Jesus, sacrifice yourself, sacrifice yourself in the name of Jesus. So, and it would just kept on hearing it. And I'm going, no, you can't be wanting to do this, you can't be wanting to do this. You know? And I was like, you can't be wanting this, you can't be wanting this, you can't be wanting this. And I kept on like thinking of myself, you know. And Bill came over and if Bill hadn't have come over and said what I mean he just said words, I mean it was just words. And I just went <laughs> In front of everybody, the emotions was unbelievable. You could literally see the tears coming out, and they were like, I mean, I could physically, it was just like, I never cried like that before in my life. The power this church has to change individual lives has shocked me. Jesus, I'm asleep there, sir. I've watched Alex stripped of his old defenses, finding a new humility. But the new Alec unsettles me. I can't believe that the church aren't more concerned about his mental state. So what, I mean, he was talking about suicide yesterday and stuff. What the heck? What's all that about? Oh, he just mentioned it to me this morning. I don't know. Does that worry you? Um, well, all sorts of things go on when, when the devil attacks you, you know. You do. It, is you that what's happening? All sorts of things. Um, well, I don't really know. Yeah, there's, there's a bit of that. You know, there's a bit of... Why would the devil be attacking you? Well, the devil doesn't want him to get baptised, does he? He doesn't want him to become a Christian, you know. And there's a lot of emotional things going inside, turmoil, all sorts of things coming up, you know. So I guess that causes you to kind of reflect on your life. And if you've had a bit of a grim life, you know, then, you know, you start to rationally look at these things in the face and say, well, what's happened in my life, you know? Whereas normally you just sort of push into one side and say, well, I'll just push that back there, you know. And we do, we push things down inside of us, but when, when God comes into our lives, it's like, they come up, we think, well, oh, gee, I thought I'd forgotten about that, I thought I'd left that in its little box, but it's coming out now, you know, and you get all kind of like, oh dear, I don't, I don't know what to do with myself, you know, that, that hurt, that's nasty, you know, and so you, you, you well, you want to run, don't you, and, and you either want to, if you can't find a solution, and it's really painful, well, I guess you feel like doing something silly to yourself, you know, they're just thoughts, you know. We believe. I feel like the church are putting Alec in danger by throwing him into this traumatic process. But this kind of soul searching is common at Battle Centre. Many are helped to regularly look within themselves and to confront the damage that life has done to them. Tony is a prominent member of the church, a shepherd and a trainee leader. During his eight years in the house, his disturbing past and his emotional needs have been brought to the surface. Because of the severity of his problems, the church have helped him seek outside therapeutic treatment to deal with the traumas of his childhood. I have been taken aback by his honesty and his willingness to talk to me after his sessions. When the things you're ashamed and embarrassed about, do you feel there's lots of areas in your life that you can't face? No, not really. Because I feel you're quite open. You seem to be. I mean, you talk about abuse. I, I mean, when you, you kind of skidded over the abuse last week and, and just now. What do you mean? You, you, you say, oh, just, you say it very quickly. And, but well, you mean, okay, if you're at the, the bed, they used to rub your nose in it. They make, used to make you, um, there's this table in the dark, and if you so-called naughty, you're made to sit under the under the table or sleep under the stairs or stand by your bed all night or things like that. As well as the, the physical stuff, emotional stuff, getting locked in um, broom cupboards. When it was snowing and cold, being made to stay outside until you cried to come in and things like that. I'm, I'm, there's other things. Is that, is that the sort of thing you want? What would you like more? Hey, I'm sorry, I feel, I feel like I'm invading. Am I invading? <clears throat> no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. No, no, no it's, no, it's, it's I, I mean, am I?
It's not easy to talk about though, is it? No. Well, I was sexually abused when I was about two and also when I was about five in different homes. The thing is, you see, that's, they weren't as bad as the emotional abuse, the physical abuse. Really? Yeah. Those were the daily things, you see. Being abused sexually wasn't the daily things, but the daily things were like the emotional things, the physical things, the fear, really. The sort of things that you'd have to live with. Oh, man. That was a, they, they, that was far worse. You never knew who you'd get beat up by next, you see. So, so you just lived in, in fear. You know, you just do the one thing, just do the one thing, say the one thing. You know. So I've carried a bit of that still in my soul. <sighs> Billy has been phoning around trying to find accommodation for Keith, who still seems to have no idea what's coming. Well, where shall I start? Basically, I have to talk about you staying here and um, sorting things out and things like that. Because in the long term, um, they don't think you could stay here for now, so it's a pity, but um, what, um, <coughs> what we had in mind really was um, to find a hostel and a hostel, what do you mean? A hostel to live and there are, um, as I understand, there are some hostels with younger people like, like you, 70 years, you know? And um, I'd like to see if we can uh, find a place there for you. And try to get it sorted next week. Yeah. So was it hard to tell me that kind of thing? Well, um, because I, it's very sad to but I had to find it hard to take it in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would have liked you to stay here and get everything uh, that everything would work out. So that it's like you've still got a home here as it were, but for the the living where you live, we can't don't think we can get it together for you to uh, to stay here. Yeah. I'd That's love to have lived here really but it done for Yeah. yeah. Well, if I can't go home, I guess I'll go for it, innit? Yeah. Yeah. Would I still be allowed to go on these other day trips and stuff? Yeah, yeah. That's right, then. Yeah, yeah. Keep up on things. <laughs> <laughs> Saturdays, Sundays, you know. So. Yeah. Well, to me, it feels like... I'm going to be, as well as I'm super, I feel like I'm going to be kicked out again. Mm -hmm. Then I'm out on my own. Mm -hmm. Then I feel homeless again. Everything you want the hardest. Mm. 
I can't be responsible for everybody I invite into the house for a few days. I've got to also say, look, we did what we could. We gave at least... Is there a part of you trying to convince yourself of this argument? <laughs> well, it's hard. Yeah, I, I, I break my heart every time I have to say goodbye to somebody, especially somebody who is obviously vulnerable. But goodness me, there's how many thousands of people out there in the streets of London? I can't be responsible for all of them. And neither must I take the weight of the world on my shoulders. It's not my, not my problem. Now is the time. And also, it's your time. Alec now claims that he has made sense of his voices. He feels that he was taken back to his attempt at suicide eight years ago, after the breakup of his marriage, and that God has told him he was with him then. All this seems to have given Alec a new sense of purpose. Well, uh, God talked to me and men alive also yesterday, very powerfully. But the thing that talks to me more is that each and every one of you is out here. And without you, my faith in God would fall. So I just want you all to say one thing with me. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm, I'm there for a purpose. I'm there for a purpose because what I'm doing in the West End, right, when we go to Soho and we go in, down the West End and we go round there, even like a Wednesday or, or a Friday, I'm speaking to people that I would have walked past. The scum of the earth to me, you know? To the old me, I was definitely the scum of the earth and I wouldn't have given two minutes. I'm giving him time. There we go. But I mean, if I look in the scriptures in the Bible, then I see people having conversion experiences. The analysts today would say, hang on, he was having a breakdown, or, or there was some psychotic behaviour here. And I say, hang on, look, that's what happens when you meet God. It might look very similar to that, but it's actually God at work doing some healing work. Uh, but anyway, he has, he's got earth, he's... Uh, been running around the house with a vacuum cleaner and, <laughs> and, and, and going down the charity shop with, with all the clothes and things. It's good. Even though Billy has made it clear in all his inquiries that Keith would be very vulnerable on the streets, no one he's contacted has offered him a place. But today he has to leave. The longer he's with them, the more difficult this process will become. I keep feeling that they failed Keith. But you have to remember what these people are about. If they can't bring God to you, they can't really help you, no matter how needy you are. The thing is, they didn't offer you immediate accommodation, which is what you need to do. Yeah. That's, that's what needs to happen now. We spoke to Steve last night. And it's obvious you can't stay with us any longer. Yep. So, today, the ball's in your court, I think. Definitely. I've not, I've not been able to, to help you. In fact, it's a hindrance me coming with you. Yeah, so what I suggest is, I, I suggest is that you go to um, this place. We'll drop you off, and in Berwick Street, and they might. You just tell him you've got nowhere, right? Okay. You've got nowhere to live, and you're 17. And take it from there. There's another place you can go to, Shaftesbury. You know where Shaftesbury Avenue is? Is that near the Bedford Centre? No. Nope. Just ask anybody where. 100 Shaftesbury Avenue. And you have nowhere to sleep tonight, right? You are now homeless. Because it's the only way you're going to get a hostel. Obviously, they think as long as we continue putting you up. But we're not prepared to do that any longer, I'm afraid, Keith. Okay. If I'm neither of them have any vacancies, should I, should I just come back to the best central? 
go down the job centre, then work my way down to Leicester Square towards the cafe. I don't think you realise what I've just said. Yeah, I know. I'm homeless. Yeah. You're not to come back to the battle centre. That's not your home. Okay then. I'm not going to be able to stop. That's 37. 35, so I must be 5 along here. I wonder if the church will ever see Keith after today and what will become of him. I feel like they should have done something more for him, but I have to admit, I don't know what. We'll see you around. Yeah. It's over there somewhere. Okay. See ya. Okay. Have you got your bag? It's left to close. It's a bit left to think, isn't it? I've noticed a change in the atmosphere at Battle Centre recently, and in particular a change in Alec. It might have something to do with the arrival of Barry, a homeless Christian who was picked up a few days ago. Do you remember that bit we read yesterday, right? And it said, uh, but because since you are Im sexually immoral anyway, remember Billy was describing to us mm -hmm. that man should have a wife, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. if, it, if man was sexually immoral anyway, Mm -hmm. But this is after Jesus was born, Corinthians, yeah? Mm -hmm. After Jesus. Why the hell did God tell Adam and Eve to go ahead and shake like rabbits? <laughs> I can't work that one out. Think about it. Now you answer that one. And then we'll go and ask Billy Boy and <laughs> see what he's got to say. <laughs> it's true. Basically, rules for them and rules for us. Who's for who? I can't even wait. Fire the house, isn't it? That's the certain thing. Is there discontent among the ranks? Uh, not entirely, no, but uh, a few little things coming too light. What kind <laughs> of things? I don't entirely agree with. Yeah. How are we playing this game? All right? Are we taking it seriously? Or is it just a a whim? Is it just something that you know, you can toss a coin on and if you win, you win, if you lose, you lose. Alec is having a problem abiding by the restrictive rules of community living. Although he's handed over all his benefits to the common purse, he now wants his own bank account and a car. Also, he wants to take a job that the church won't approve. The thing is, people that live in community, the issue is not whether Alec's right to take a job in a bar, he could work in a bar, he could work wherever he wants. But living in community, you have to put community first. You have to be here for all our meals, all our meetings. It's living in community, that's the first, do you know what I mean? And if you want to live for your job, don't live in community. It's black and white, isn't it? But I mean, these things are bound to happen, and they'll either work themselves out or they're not. What, what, how, how do you feel about his future here? He's got a sort of few things out. Are you he concerned? Needs to get a job. He's not doing too well, really. When I think about it now. You are gifted by the Holy Spirit to become a member of the body. For weeks now, Alec has been asking to be baptised. Without this ritual of rebirth, he feels frustrated, unable to go forward, and worried that his spiritual progress is unravelling. I am waiting, right, to move into God's kingdom, right? And excuse the pun, but they're fucking it up, right? Because the, the, you, you go on about Satan and that, right? But 
I am stuck and this, I could just go and snap, right? Because I'm not getting baptized, right? <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck are you playing at? It's like, get my baptized. You know, the old me has got to go. It's parked, it's away. You know, it's sitting there and it's, it's not doing anything, you know? And it's like, I'm just ready just to say, like, okay, I'll go and get baptized. I'll go in a church and get baptized. Because I know it's what I've been taught to do. What is Alex saying? I want to get baptized now, I'm blocked. And you're saying, now wait for a couple of weeks. Right, okay. Because he's the kind of guy that he is, um, firstly, I think he can wait. There's no pressure. I'm after an instant baptism. Um, and because he's someone who works things through intelligently, I think he needs to know why baptism is important. Okay. It's going to be the foundation for the rest of his life. It really is. It's not, not just a part of an experience this week. But Alec, if he, if he is called to live with us here and to take his Christianity, his faith seriously, he needs to know what it means. After 10 days, the leaders have decided it's time for Barry to move on. It falls to Tim, who took him off the streets, to put him back there. There you go. You've been sleeping out anyway, so therefore we bring you in for a week and then throw you back out. Six o'clock in the evening, and that'll do you. <laughs> Tim, come on. Where's the goodness in your heart? Where's the goodness and the kindness in your heart? You're supposed to be off God. You bear his name. Well, you try to bear his name. Come on, man. Where's your heart, bruv? Come on. The cliché of many are called, few are chosen, really applies here. Successful applicants for residence in this house are rare. I now realise just how strongly the church feel that Alec would be a value to them, and how resolute they are in easing his path to success. Leo, will you pack in? Because this is, this is serious now. All right, we've got to go. Yeah, yeah, OK. We haven't got time for this whole nonsense, right? Camera's off. Camera's off, come on. Come on. Sorry. If, if, if he remains here for longer, and okay, and in his insecurity and all the rest of it, he, he drags Alec down into that as well, and we lose both of them, then, you know, that's, 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 well, what's that achieving, you know? So for Alec's sake and for other members of the body and whatever else, I have to make that decision as well. For the past couple of weeks, Billy has been scaling down his duties. His health has been up and down for two years, but just recently it's declined dramatically. I just gradually started to lose weight. I'm down to about nine stone now. I was 13 stone. It just all fell off. But I'm feeling, feeling really weak. No energy. No, no life, the life just sort of drained out of me. So obviously I thought it was cancer. Most of my family have died of cancer, about the same age, in the same way. I just look at my face and I see my brother. It's horrible. I'm not scared to die. I'd rather welcome dying than living like this. I'm not scared to die in. What, what I'm worried about is like, I don't know. I, I even sat up the other night and wrote out um, all the songs. I didn't write them out. All the songs that I would have at my funeral, you know what I mean? Hang on, I'd have the Beatles, all you need is love and all that. <laughs> Why not? What? Why not? Where is God in all this? What? He's, um, gently shepherded me into my rest. But you're a young man. So was Jesus. There's a purpose in it all. What is the purpose? It sounds to me like somebody's giving up. I'm not giving up. I'm having every medical aid possible. Well, I think I am. I don't really think 
It's not HIV or anything, is it? No. The blood tests. being tested. Billy has been having tests throughout the eight months I've been here, but the doctors have found nothing. The community have been shocked by his negative state of mind, and the leaders are keen to turn the situation around quickly. I mean, months ago, I remember when he began slowing down, and I thought he was probably just depressed, suffering with depression. Yeah. And they were talking about ME. Um, and to be honest, I thought then he could probably have done with a dose of... Um, antidepressants or something, yeah. just to pick him up. Yeah. Because I think over the years, and he mentioned earlier this afternoon, that I think after his mother died, he got had a, had a breakdown. Um, and he's probably known something of depression off and on, I think. And I, yeah, I don't know. Since living outside Battle Centre, Keith has surprised me by turning up to most of the church's regular meetings and by pushing to be baptised. He's also trying to make a life outside the church, applying for a job as a trainee mechanic and losing his virginity. I'm like so happy now I've sorted myself out. What's this woman? Tell me about this woman. I don't want any. <laughs> no! No! It's You're embarrassing. Oh, we, we were just like um, making friends and that like, then I floated and truth was then off that I said dead and she said do me I was like no I can't get out of that one get out really? yeah shagged me basically and I was like oh shit you did <laughs> did you use condom <laughs> condom and what was it like very nice tell these people what you did I oh, already told Chris what did he say don't <laughs> your first time I oh, really enjoyed it this is where the party is Two weeks after Barry was asked to leave, the church have decided that Alec is ready for baptism. Last night, Alec bid farewell to alcohol in a public house. It took quite a lot of pints to decide that it was not, was not the right thing, you know. But it was okay. I feel good. You do? I feel, I feel brilliant. I feel brand new. I feel excellent. The tools are in motion. Really? The toolkit is open. Yeah. Oh, the mechanics are about to work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, mate. The tools are in motion this weekend. I think you're looking a bit different today. I don't know what it is. You're looking really happy, is it? Aye, aye, aye. Are you feeling happy? Aye. I'm feeling chuffed. Why? No, I just know if it's a way to happen. It's, it's a buzz. <laughs> it's ace. Who's next? I think Alec truly believes he's starting a new life today. Maybe he's getting something most of us have wished for at times. A clean slate. A future where his past is never judged. I wonder what he'll do with it. I just want to recommend Alec to you. He's a real guy. He's a real person. He tests every... I know he's a real person, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he's, 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 he tests everything, he works it all through. He's genuine. And uh, I'm just thrilled, and I know you, you folk here are thrilled that we've got Alec here in the water tonight. <laughs> Let's pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you. Father, I thank you that this is his destiny, to be a man following after Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. And so now, Alec, in the name that is above every other name and power and authority in heaven and on earth, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptise you. Yes! 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 Power of God. Power of God is on you. The power of God is on you, Alec. The power of God is on you, Alec. The power of God is on you, Alec. Like a mantle clothing you. The power of God is on you. Alec, be filled with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Be filled, be filled, be filled, be filled, be filled, be filled. Be filled. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit.
das Körner und Zeichen. In the weeks since his baptism, Alec has stopped fighting the church and has impressed everyone with his growing enthusiasm. But he's just told me that he's found community living increasingly impossible. Last night he decided to leave, and today he's going to tell the house. Well, uh, hmm, I'm waiting for a phone call. Yeah. But I've been sort of 99% certain that I've got a job. Right. Uh, but uh, basically, I'll be moving out probably tomorrow. Tomorrow? Alec, what did you say? That's the, the, the way. I mean, I've, I've been thinking about it for a week or two, you know. That's why I was wanting to, like, a conversation with you. Are you going to look at Does anybody know at all? No. No, no one. No one. Uh, You've been waiting for your man, haven't you? No, I don't want to wash my hands for the Jesus Army and move out. I mean, I'm, they are a part of my life. And no matter where I am or where I go, the Jesus Army are going to be part of my life, you know. Uh, and believe it or not, the first thing I'll pack is will be a Bible. <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to come this far, you know. Uh, the journey's still long. You know, uh, but I can break my heart. <laughs> I'm breaking my own heart, but I mean, I've got to. I mean, I'm finding it really difficult. You know, I mean, uh, I've just got to, got to go. You know. I'm learning to love him, to love and forgive. Him. I'm learning to trust him, to let the man live. I'm learning to see him, to see who he is. I'm learning to love. You need to stop running sometime. <laughs> I'm leaving. Uh, I'm going on the rest of the journey. I think I'm beginning to feel over recent weeks particularly uh, that Alec is a guy um, uh, yeah a guy you could just get close to a guy who, who, who as he finds more and more of his stability is a guy who would be very solid and dependable and could help us in the work um, I mean in, in I'm turning around and saying he's going tomorrow. It's a bit devastating. I think I'm a bit shocked, a bit... Uh, yeah. Yeah, you... You know, it's like you, you, you always realise how much you love someone when they're about to disappear or they've died or something like that. You take care, can you miss you? Please be in touch. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a phone for the weekend. Yeah, do that. Let's Just know where you are. Let's 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 know where you are.
More potential converts came and went, and I only visited the house occasionally. The church and I kept in touch with Alec as he travelled, and then suddenly he cut off all contact with both of us. A week later, I got a call from Battle Centre. And health and recovery. Amen. Billy has just had the results from a test he asked the hospital to do last week. Billy, we proclaim over you life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we proclaim over you life. Life. So Steve's going to tell the community tonight at Agape. <laughs> I've got AIDS. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not ashamed of it, do you know what I mean? I just don't want to hurt people. I've kept it from myself all those years. It was criminal not to have a test. But these are the dearest people to me, you know. These people have, like, pulled me out of the gutter. And I was a worthless tramp. Standing on the doorstep. These people gave me life and love. These people, my family. <laughs> Stronger than blood relations. Often to be separated, you know. <laughs> God help me. You see the whole fool when you're using them. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It seems that Billy contracted HIV from a male partner before he joined the church. News of this man's death later reached Billy, but he always ignored the implications. Battle Centre has been shocked by this news. There's been crying and a few concerns about risks of infection. But no one is really angry or hurt by Billy's deception of himself or them. Their main anxiety is over how soon they can get him back home. <laughs> yeah, I mess up, I'm imperfect. I, I, I just, oh dear. I just know God's love, that's all I know, Leo. All I know is something that happened to me years ago, is that God's love came into me. You know, I knew I didn't deserve it. I knew I'd messed up. I knew that there was all sorts of, you know, rubbish in my life that we can call sin. I knew that, and God's word spoke to me. And God, you know, God's, I'm glad that God's word is hard at times. It's like, it's like the surgeon's knife that dares to cut into the cancer. I'm glad, I don't want to change God's word. I don't want to water it down for the sake of mankind, because you, that is the delusion. We're talking about Billy deceiving himself. The world is deceiving itself, saying it doesn't have sin, it doesn't have cancer. And God says, you do. And if you'll only listen to me, and let me heal you, let me deal with you. Exactly what's going on with Billy. Ex you know. And the world is in denial. After two months of silence, Alec called me last night. He says his life has moved on, but news of Billy has just reached him, and he's coming back to see him this morning. How are you doing, all right? 
Like your old dog. How are you doing, mate? How are you doing? How are you, all right? Huh? So you stopped drinking Red Bull, I believe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh I just heard. I've been surprised by Alex's sudden return, but I suppose I shouldn't be. I realised that these people gave him something special. I wonder if he still has it. We could throw hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds into like fucking Harley Street doctors for Billy right if we had it, right? Sorry, I wouldn't give him anything. You know what I mean? He's got everything he's, he can, you know? What is that thing it's giving you? Tell me what it is. It's an inner emotional strength that you kind of see. That's what it is. Just a strength from within it, nobody can see. And, and you don't know it's there until you need it. I've tried to do things my own way And I've tried to do what people say And I'm going nowhere fast And I'm turning to you at last What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do, Lord? What do you want me to do, Lord? 